In the management of SVT, one of the more challenging arrhythmias in children is the atrial ventricular node reentrant tachycardia. The freezer and the freezer extra cardiac cryoblation catheters are the only FDA approved catheters for the treatment of avian RT in children. And for me, that's been a tremendous advancement in the care we provide to treat children with arrhythmias. In August of 2003, I had my first patient that had even RT that had inadvertent heart block when I used radio frequency energy, which was the only technology available at the time. That was the first and actually the last patient that I had an inadvertent heart block from, because in October 2003, I started using the freezer catheter for the treatment of avian RT, and I've yet to have a patient develop heart block since that time. When I had atrial ventricular node or reentrant tachycardia myself, I had cryothermobulation used because I didn't want to have to worry about a heart block. They used a freezer extra catheter to treat my avian RT. It's been a game changer for patients and families, and actually for myself. When treating avian RT in children, the area that we're applying energy in is much smaller. The margin of error is much smaller too. If we used radio frequency ablation when we're treating avian RT, it's possible as arrhythmia breaks, as you apply energy, the catheter may jump. And it may jump from a safe area to an area that's more uh, precarious, such as very close to the AV node. If someone's in AV and RT and you're applying cryothermal ablation energy, the catheter sticks, and so as the arrhythmia terminates, the catheter won't move, and you can continue to apply energy to get rid of the slow pathway using the freeze and the freezer extra cryoablation catheters is critical to make sure you have a safe procedure and an effective procedure. The cryomapping mode is a unique feature for the, of the freeze and the freezer extra catheters. And what that allows you to do is when you apply energy, it drops and holds at a temperature of negative 30 degrees Celsius. And in the smallest of children that I do procedures on, that's very helpful because I can watch for a period of time and make sure that I'm not having an adverse effect, such as AV node injury, PR prolongation. But I also can determine if it's effective in eliminating the arrhythmia. And once I achieve those effects in the cryomapping mode, then I can go to the negative 70. The cryomapping mode gives you one other option to test the safety of the cryothermal ablation. When you speak with families about treating their child's arrhythmia. I always start off by saying our number one goal is to make sure your child gets through this procedure safely. And I take that very seriously. And now that we have the freezer and the freezer extra cryoablation catheters approved for the treatment of avian RT in children, I know I have all the tools available to reach that goal.